how to sew the manor house at Christmas. So this beautiful manor house for a classic Christmas decoration and pop tea lights inside so the light shines through. Complete your village with the Christmas church and part one and two of the Christmas village. Cutting out. Take out the fabric panel from your kit and give it a press. You'll see that every Every piece is labelled, all the seam allowances are included on them and it's important that you remember which is which. So have a good look at the panel first and then once you've worked out where everything is, cut around the outer printed line of every piece and pin the label that's printed above them to the top of the right side. Once you've done that, put them into piles. So I've got the main house outer pieces here, so you've got the side, the front, the roof and the base. And then I've got the main house lining pieces. These are all the same size, but they're just printed so that you can see the inside of the manor house. Put those to one side. Then there's the side wing pieces. Again, you've got front, back, roofs and a base. And then you've got the side wing lining pieces. Again, these are printed to look like the inside of the manor house so that you can see inside it. You've got enough pieces on your panel to make two chimneys. The chimneys all have outer pieces and again it's really important that you label each of the pieces by pinning the label that's printed above them to the right side. And then you have all the lining chimney pieces. So organise everything into piles so that you know which is which. It makes it easier during assembly and then you don't forget which piece you're using. Preparing the fabric pieces. We're going to add interfacing and wadding to the fabric pieces. So take all of the outer fabric pieces for the main house, the side wing and the chimneys. Place them right side up onto the glue side of the interfacing. I'm using a medium weight interfacing. It's about the right weight and a fusible is easier to use. Place them all right sides up and press them into place like this. So you can see all of the main house side wing and chimney pieces are pressed into place. You can use a fusible mat or an applique mat if you want to protect your iron from the interfacing while you do this. Or just use a pressing cloth. Then cut around the outer edge of all the pieces until they're all backed with interfacing. So here's all of the main house outer pieces I've cut around the edge. The side wing outer pieces all back with the interfacing and then all of the chimney pieces as well. Remember, it's only the outer pieces that you press to the interfacing. You now need to press wadding to the wrong side of all of the lining pieces, but only the main house and the side wing. Don't put wadding on the chimneys. It's too fiddly and too structured. You don't need that. So just press them all into place like this. Making the pieces. The pieces are all made in the same way and I'm going to start with the main house front. Now if you want to cut the door out to, so that you can put the LED lights in, then you need to draw round it on the wrong side. So take the manor house front and just using a pencil or an erasable pen, draw around the door outline. You can see this through the interfacing. It helps to be able to sew it correctly later. Then place this right sides facing with the manor house lining and pin it together. Pin it together all the way around matching the raw edges. I decided to leave the door open in the manor house front, the back and the side wing. When you come to the door make sure that they match up and pin them together across the bottom. And then pin up the other side. Now you need to leave a turning gap in one side so that you can turn the piece right sides out. So measure to find the centre. I'm going to leave a one and a half inch turning gap. So if you measure and mark three quarter of an inch either side of this turning gap, of the centre mark, that will be your turning gap. Mark this using a pen or you can put pins in like I'm doing to remind you to start and finish. Now if you're not leaving the doors open if you don't want to cut the doors open don't sew around the door but if you are like this so from the turning gap all the way along around the edge of the door that you've drawn and back to the turning gap leaving that unstitched and then it will look like this so before you turn it right sides out clip off the corners this just removes the bulk that's in the corners so that when you turn the piece right sides out it will have nice and neater corners because you've removed the bulk of the fabric the interfacing and the wadding so cut off all the corners. I've trimmed across them and then a little bit either side. 
When you get to the door, if you've decided that you're going to leave it, if you decide you want to cut it out and you've sewn it, cut an eighth of an inch inside the drawn, the stitched outline. So just cut very gently an eighth of an inch just so that you're removing most of the bulk, but there's a little bit left. Obviously, if you haven't sewn round the door outline, you won't need to do this. Once you've done that, clip off the corners at the bottom of the door. And then because the top of the door is curved, make little snips just around the curve, in only into the seam allowance, up to the stitching, but not actually into the stitching. So make sure you don't cut through the seam. And then I've clipped out a little triangle actually at the corners just to remove extra bulk from this area. Take your time to do this and use nice sharp scissors. Now once that's done, you can turn it right sides out. To start with, to help the seams to lay right on the edge, fold the top piece of fabric. So this is the Manor House front. I'm turning the top piece of fabric over and pressing it. And this just helps the seam to lay right on the edge when you turn it right sides out. So press it all the way round. And then press the side that has the turning gap as well. Now I'm just going to turn it over and just where the turning gap is, fold the lining side over as well. It just helps these edges to stay under. And now you can turn it right sides out. So put your fingers inside through the turning gap and grab hold of the opposite corner and push it out through the turning gap with your fingers. The turning gap is big enough to be able to turn all the pieces right sides out, but you will just need to do it slowly and gently so that you don't split the edge of the stitching so it doesn't come undone. But just work very slowly and gradually to pull the whole piece out through the turning gap. So you can see here, I'm just pushing it out gradually, just working round it one side at a time. If you just keep turning it round and pulling it out, it works a bit easier. The pieces that don't have the door cut out in them are a bit quicker to turn out. It's just because of the door cut out. It takes a while to just push out all the corners. Now, once you've got it turned right sides out like this, push your fingers into each of the corners just to push out the fabric so that the corners are laying right on the edges. And then take a, a turning tool. I'm using the stick for my turning tool, but you can use any point turner. Just use something that's got a point, but it isn't too sharp. And gently push it into the corners. If you push the corner onto the tool rather than the tool into the corner, you're less likely to split the stitches or the fabric. So take your time here to make sure all the corners are pushed out and that all the seams are laying right on the edges. Once that's done, roll the seams between your fingers so they lay right on the edge and give it a press all the way around, making sure the seams lay on the edge and the edges of the turning gap are folded under. Now fold the edges of the turning gap under and give them a press. And then it will look like this because I've taken some time to make sure it's nice and flat. Now you need to slip stitch this turning gap closed so that when you sew the pieces together, this is closed. It's only a small one, won't, so it doesn't take too long. So thread your needle with some matching thread. Push the thread the needle through the end one side of the turning gap and work two or three stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread and then work a slip stitch by working your needle under the fold of the fabric on one side and under the fold on the other and this will leave a vertical stitch going from one piece to the other so just work all the way along and then when you get to the other end of the turning gap again Work a few stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread. And then cut it off. 
and now your manor house front is finished. Pin the label back on so that you remember which is which. Make all the pieces in the same way. So there's the main house front and back and the two side pieces and the base and then the two roofs. So you can see I've made them all in exactly the same way. And then for the side wing, I cut the door out from the side wing. And then there's the other pieces of the side wing, the other walls. And then you've got the side wing base and the two roofs. The chimneys are made in exactly the same way. Remember, the chimneys don't have wadding on them. They only have interfacing. So take, this is two chimney side pieces, pin them together. You can see I've removed the labels before I've done this. And then when I've sewn them and turned them right sides out, I'm going to print, pin them back into place. So it's a, it's a much smaller piece. So take your time to make sure all the raw edges are matching up and pin it together. Now you need to leave a smaller turning gap in the chimney pieces just because they're smaller pieces. So measure and mark a one inch turning gap in the centre of one of the edges. I've done it down the side edge because it's the longest. And then sew it together all the way around, but leaving the turning gap unstitched. When you've done that, it will look like this. So clip off the corners and trim the seam allowances. Because these are little pieces, it's best if you trim the seam allowances. I've trimmed them down by about half and then cut across all the corners to remove bulk and in with these side pieces into the V as well. But don't cut, don't trim the seam allowance where the turning gap is, otherwise you won't have much to turn under. With this side piece, just clip out a little triangle of fabric where the point is, as that will help to get a neater finish. And then fold the edges of the turning gap over to the wrong side and press them so they stay under. And then you can turn it right sides out. Now I found the easiest way to turn out these little chimney pieces was using a turning tool. So if you put the tube inside and then push the stick through, that's the easiest and quickest way. If you don't have the turning tool, then just turn it very carefully right sides out. Again, use a point turner or the stick of the turning tool to just push out all of those corners and points. Once you've done that, it will look like this. Again, you can see I've pin the label to the right side so put it back into place and don't forget to slip stitch those gaps closed and here are all the pieces for the two chimneys so you've got the sides fronts backs and the chimney tops as well and that's all your pieces finished cutting out the windows to cut out a window from one piece, first stitch around the inside of the window frame using a shorter stitch length and then work around the outside of the window frame. You can see it will look like this, so you've got two outlines of stitching quite close together. Now to cut out the window, fold it in half and make a little snip through the centre of the window and then open it up. And you need to cut out the whole window piece, so I found it easier to cut into the corners first. Make sure you cut up to but not actually through the stitching if you leave a couple of fabric threads inside the stitching then you won't actually cut the stitching but you've worked the two lines so that if the cutting is a little bit close the second line secures it so cut all the way around the edge like this to remove the window now you can choose which windows you cut out you can leave all of them filled or you can cut out all of them or just do a few like I have Obviously, you need to cut out doors so that you can get the tea light inside. So it's up to you how much light you have shining through. But this is how you would do one window. I've decided to put this in the manor house, in the main house side piece, just I've cut out this one window. So trim it all the way around so you've got just a little bit, two or three fabric threads inside the stitch line. Use some sharp scissors, doesn't matter whether they're small or large as long as they're nice and sharp and work very carefully. You'll have to trim it from the outer side and then the lining side to make sure you trim off everything and then pull it gently with your fingers to make sure there are no loose threads 
that may fray later and cut those all off. So I'm just pulling it to make sure no there are no loose threads. And that's one window cut out. Repeat that to cut out any of the other windows you want. So you can see I've just cut out the central window from this piece. And then from this piece, I've cut out the windows, but left the window frames between. But you do it all in exactly the same way. And then I only cut out the doors from the fronts and backs of the main house. Once you've done that, you can add some quilting details. So I've quilted around the window. So that just means you sew through all three layers using a slightly longer stitch length. This gives some definition and detail to your pieces and also makes them a little bit stiffer. With the roofs, I quilted around the snow. It makes them stand out a bit. And with the base, you can quilt along the lines. So for the side where you see, I've quilted around the windows. And you, you can see that it makes them stand out a bit more. and does give more detail. You can also add any other extra stitches or embroidery as well, if you like. And again, I've stitched around the snow for this piece. So that's all the pieces ready to assemble. Making the main house. We're going to start by assembling the walls. Take the main house front and the main house right side and place them lining sides facing. Match up the bottom edge and clip or pin together and then match up the top edge and clip together. I find using fabric clips is easier here as it holds everything together and they're easily removable. But you can use pins if you prefer. Now take a needle and some matching sewing thread and push the needle through the bottom corner of the main house front. Leave an end so it doesn't pull through and then work two or three stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread. Then take the needle and push it through the corner of the main house right side. And then work a couple of stitches across between the two just to hold them together at the base. Now you need to slip stitch them together but only into the outer fabrics, not into the lining fabrics, as they will sit better and form better right angles when the house is constructed. So to do this, push your needle un through the fabric on one side and then into the fabric on the other. So you're working long stitches through the outer fabric and then that will leave a vertical stitch going between them. You can do this by holding them lining sides facing as I was just doing, or you can do it by holding them flat. Whichever way you do it, work two or three stitches and then pull the thread very gently so that you pull it all up so you don't pucker the piece, but it just holds it flat. Once you've sewn it together, it will look like this. Once you've got to your thread to the top, push your needle through to the lining side and work a few small stitches on top of each other to secure the thread. It's less visible on the lining side, that's why I secure it that side. Once you've done that, take the main house back and place that lining sides facing with the right hand side of the main house right side. Again, clip together at the bottom, then clip together at the top and then in the centre. And then sew these two pieces together and slip stitch in exactly the same way from the bottom to the top. Once that's done, it will look like this. Now take the main house left side and pin that lining sides facing to the right hand side of the main house back. So all of these pieces are sewn together in exactly the same way. And after a while you work out which way you find it easier, whether to sew them lining sides together like that or to hold them flat. But you can see here that the stone and the bricks all match up to make a nice line so you can make sure you match that up while you're doing it once you've sewn all four pieces together then you know need to sew them together into a loop so again clip them lining sides facing and then while you're sewing them together you can make sure that the bricks and the stone patterns line up because there was a slightly lighter stone going through the centre. It doesn't really matter but you can try to do this just for a neater finish. Sew that together and then that's all of the walls assembled to make the, the loop. Attaching the base. 
Place the main house base and the main house front together with the lining sides facing so that the bottom edge of the main house front and the top edge of the main house base meet up and the bottom edges are level. Clip them together at either end and then clip them in the centre. Now with obviously with this section I've left the door open unstitched so make sure you clip either side so the door section isn't stretched open and the, light, the sides of the door are laying nice and straight. And then sew together in the same way as you sewed the walls together, but don't stitch across the door section. You need to leave that unstitched, obviously. And then stitch together down the side, across the other side, and then all the way up. Once you've sewn the front, you can see I've left that door section unstitched. So once you've done that, clip and sew down this side and then clip us and sew down the back again leaving the door section unstitched if you've op left it open once you do that it will look like this so your base is nicely attached slip stitched all the way around to the bottom of the walls now give the house a little press if you take each of the seams that you've slip stitched together, lay them flat and press them. By doing this, it just removes any puckers from the stitching and also gives the sides a little bit of structure, makes them more right angled so the house and the base will stand up better. It's worth taking the time to do that. There's quite a few seams to do, but just press the whole thing flat. It's easier to do this before you attach the roof, so which is why I'm doing it at this stage. So just press all the way round and it will just give your house a little bit more structure. And then now the base is attached to the walls of the main house and you're ready to put the roof on. Adding the roof. Take the two main house roofs together and place them lining sides facing. making sure you match up the pointed edges and the straight edges. They're exactly the same size, so they match up nicely. So clip them together all the way along the top edge and then slip stitch them together in the same way as you joined the walls together using a matching thread. Make sure you use a white thread for this so it doesn't show up. And then give it a press. Once you've joined them all together, just lay it flat and press it. This just gives it a little bit more structure and removes any little puckers that you get from the hand stitching. Press it from both sides to get a really neat finish. Now, once that's sewn together, you can then join it to the top of the house. So make sure that the roof front is on the house front because the angled end needs to go on the left-hand side and the straight end on the right-hand side. So as long as you've got the roof front on the main house front, you're in the right place. Now, clip it together at the top of the gable. You'll see there's a little overhang on one side and then slip stitch that in place from the top to the bottom or you can start at the gable top and work down to the bottom. But you will have an overhang, that's just part of the design. So make sure it's all lying nice and flat and you have got that overhang and slip stitch the two together by securing the thread at the bottom of the roof. Remember, only work into the outer fabrics, not into the lining fabrics, because the whole house will sit better that way. So work a couple of stitches on top of each other and then work from the roof into the walls. Again, try to keep your stitches fairly small and close together and work the long slip stitch underneath the outer fabric and then into the outer fabric on the other side so that you're left with a small vertical stitch. After you've worked two or three stitches, pull the thread very gently so that it pulls the two fabric pieces together, but make sure it's gentle so that you don't um, break the thread. So stitch together all the way up to the top and then stitched all the way down the other side. Again, you will have an overhang. When you stitch these, make sure the overhang on both sides measures the same. So now you can see I've stitched that section into place. 
Now the lining side of the roof now needs to be stitched to the top of the walls along the front of the main house. They overhang the straight top edges of the walls so you only need to stitch into the lining fabric. You can see that there's a small cutout section on the left hand side that's so that that's the same as the overhang on the right hand side and you'll need to slip stitch these together all the way along but pin them together in place first it's important that the overhang is the same distance and you can measure or just judge this by eye all the way along so that the overhang on the right hand and the left is pinned into place in the same way across the centre so you can see I'm just adjusting this and then pinning the two pieces together. Once you're happy that it's the same distance all the way along, then you can stitch it into place. Now this time you need to stitch into the outer fabric of the main house front, but only into the lining fabric of the roof. Make sure that the stitches don't come through to the outside of the roof because you don't want to see them, they need to be hidden. So you can see I've stitched this into place you can't see the stitches from the front though. I'm just finishing it off. So I've got a little bit of the way along just to show you how you work your stitches into the lining of the roof, but into the top of the walls, the outer fabric. So just very carefully, just keep turning it around every now and then just to make sure that your stitches aren't coming through to the outer roof. Although with the wadding, it makes it a bit easier for that not to happen. And then when you get to the end, just secure the thread with a few over sewing stitches into the top of the walls. So this just secures the front of the roof to the front of the house. But you do it underneath so that the overhang will sit nicely on top of the house. So once you've sewn the front of the roof to the front of the house, you now need to sew the back of the roof to the back of the house. Again, make sure that the overhangs are in the same place. You can see that cutout section, that's the overhang, that is pinned to the corner of where the side and the back are joined together. Just the same way as you did with the front. So pin that into place. and then pin the other side into place. And these two overhangs will be the same measurement in the same way as the front of the house. And then pin it into place. Again, make sure that it's the same distance of overhang all the way along. If you like, you can measure this I like to do this just to be sure that I've got the same amount of overhang. You'll just get a more even finish and also the house will sit better. And then slip stitch that into place all the way along. Just like this. So you can see now the front of the roof and the back of the roof. So all we've got to do is sort out this side. So lay the roof flat and take a pin and follow it along from the overhang up to the top in a straight line. And pop a pin here because this is where you're going to sew the top of the other side in. You could do this with a ruler by just laying it along. Now the point of the gable needs to sit where that pin is. So these, this side of the house is sitting further inside the roof. And the reason we're doing that is because this roof is going to overlap onto the side wing later. So this, this side of the house needs to sit inside it. So if you just put the point of the gable where that pin is that you placed on the top, then you know that's in the right place. Once you've pinned the point of the gable in, you can then pin the side, the point slope side into place to the lining on one side and then you can pin it into place on the other side. And now you know that this wall is standing absolutely straight because you've got it pinned to the top of the roof. And then simply slip stitch these sides into place 
through the top of the wall but only into the roof lining make sure the stitches don't come through to the roof outer <clears throat> and then it will look like this so you can see the wall is inset but it's standing no nice and straight and you've got the rest of the roof all fixed making the side wing join the walls of the side wing together in a row in the same way as you did with the main house so you've got the front the right side the back and the left side sew them together and then sew them together in a loop and then sew the base into place in the same way as the main house then take the two roof pieces they're different sizes but join them together across the top edge and then slip stitch them together in the same way as you've done with the other pieces and you did with the main house Once you join them together, you can join them to the house. So place the join roofs on top of the walls. You'll see that the right hand side roof is shorter. So place the right hand side roof on first. And it will meet up exactly with the top edge of the right hand side outer. There is no overhang because this is where it's joined to the main house. And then you can see on the other side, if you clip it down the other side, there is an overhang. So on the left hand side, there's an overhang on the right side, there isn't. So sew that into place and then always making sure that the pointed part of the gable of the walls is in the apex of the roof. Clip it into place, you can see that the right hand side, it looks like the left from here, when we're working from the back but from the front it's the right hand side there is no overhang but there is an overhang on the other side so sew these cable ends into place by slip stitching in the same way as you did with the main house now once you've done that you can see those gables are stitched into place you need to sew the top of the right hand side outer to the bottom of the roof just slip stitch them into place and then to attach the other side where the overhang that's done in the same way as the main house so pin it into place to start with making sure that it's straight you can do that by measuring or judge it by eye pin it into place and then slip stitch across remember don't work into the roof outer roof only into the lining and then the side wing is finished it looks like this you can see there's the overhang on one side there's no overhang on the other side and then press all the seams flat to give the side wing some structure in the same way that you did with the main house and that's the side wing finished. Joining the side wing to the main house. Place the main house on the right hand side of the side wing so it's positioned centrally and you can see that the pointed part of the main house will sit on top of the roof. You can remove any labels now so that they you don't stitch into them. So it's important that it's placed centrally. So the easiest way I found to do this was once you've placed them together is measure across the bases. So if you measure to find the centre of the base of the main house and mark that with a pin, then measure to find the centre of the side wing base and mark that with a pin. Once you've marked the two centres with the pin, then you can match them up. So place the two bases together, matching up those pins, and pin them together across the bases. And now you know that the main house and the side wing are placed exactly, exactly centrally, because obviously the side wing is wider than the main house. So pin it together in the centre and then you can pin it together across. Taking the time to pin the two pieces together in as many places as you can makes sewing it together a lot easier. You could use fabric glue to secure it if you prefer. I know some people have used glue when they've sewed instead of sewing their houses together or you could use fabric glue to just temporarily hold it before you stitch i've used pins because i find that you can pin the pieces together really easily and then slip stitch together so with the top of the roof measure to find the center of the roof of the side wing and pop a pin there and then match that center pin 
to the apex of the roof of the main house. Now, you'll probably find, depending on how carefully you've constructed, that the roof of the main house sits just below the top of the roof of the side wing. And it's intentional, it's supposed to do that. Don't worry, the main house is slightly shorter than the side wing, just to help it fit better. So once you've got the base and roof stitched together, pin together across the walls. Make sure that they're straight so that the main house wall is running nice and straight up the lines. And you can use the lines of the bricks, printed bricks, to check this because you don't want to have it angled. It needs to be nice and straight so that the walls line up nicely. So pin it into place here and then put as many extra pins as you want to help with sewing. You can also pin as you go and then slip stitch it up the side across the roof, down the other side of the roof, down the other side and across the base. And then once you've done that, it will look like this and you've now attached the main house and the side wing together. Stitch slowly and carefully, working your stitches close together. As long as you take your time, it's fairly simple to do. And the main house section with the side wing is now all joined together. Adding the chimneys. There are enough pieces to make two chimneys, which are both made in the same way. So start by making one chimney. Place the one chimney front and one chimney side together with the lining sides facing and slip stitch together in the same way as you've done with all the house pieces. And then slip stitch the chimney back and then the other chimney side and stitch them together so they form a loop like you've done with the house pieces. Then take the chimney top and slip stitch that to the top of the chimney all the way around. The edges match up exactly. There's no overhang, it just fits nicely around the top. And once you've done that, the chimney will look like this. Press all the side it seems nice and flat so to give it some structure and then make the other chimney in exactly the same way. Now you need to put your chimneys on your house. It's up to you where you put them. So place them in different positions until you're happy. You can put one at the end of the main house and you can put an another chimney so it goes just above the top, the left of the main house or you could put one on the side wing. It's entirely up to you. So just play around with it until you're happy where the chimneys go. I've decided to put mine both on the main house. Now take a small amount of soft toy stuffing or it could be a piece of cotton wool or some leftover wadding but just a little amount. It just gives the chimney a bit more structure and makes it a bit more stable when it's sitting on top of the house. Now place it where you decide you want to go. Obviously the chimney sides will sit inside those pointed gable ends and then pin it into place by just pushing pins through the edge of the chimney and into the roof. It's easier if you pin the whole chimney in, into place before you do any of the stitching, just because you can hold it nice and still and also make sure that it's standing up straight. So pin it into place at the sides and then place a pin through the front and the back of the chimney into the roof outer. And then you can make sure that those are straight. And then slip stitch into place all the way round. Until you've got the whole chimney attached. And then sew the other chimney into place in the same way. So you can see I've got this chimney on the end of the gable. I've placed the other chimney on top of the house. So it would be just above where a fireplace would be at the end of the house. And again, I've slip stitched into place all the way around. And now your manor house is all ready for Christmas. All you have to do is take your LED tea lights and place them inside. They go inside the cutout doors quite easily. So just push them inside. So I, I put two in the main house and I put two in the side wing. But you can use more if you want more light to shine through. And then you can see... Once it's dark, the light will shine through all the cutout windows and the door and your manor house is now finished as part of a beautiful Christmas decoration.